So what is needed for the regional uh, sport competition uh, to be successful? So, and we, we found out in general that there are three pillars basically needed. First, you need a vision, then you need uh, infrastructure, you need finance, and at the end, you need, of course, athletes' welfare, which is always very important. And what is the backbone for everything this is, of course, the corporate governance, transparent legal environment, clear legal structures, uh, and with the clarity, I mean also not only the big corporate governance and uh, legal documentation, but most short, simple, and efficient. Like uh, it's very, uh, very uh, more beneficial for sport. And of course, you always need some kind of innovation uh, to increase a little bit of the athlete's welfare and uh, to also uh, encourage the financing infrastructure and of course the vision as well. So basically what is important in terms of the vision, and I will speak mostly also from the legal perspective, is that you always need some kind of long-term vision and then short-term plan which is flexible. But it's usually a mistake that the regional uh, competition are made for uh, each year separately. So year by year by year. And then in this kind of uh, structure, you usually make some kind of mistake because you always adjust the, the plan according to the current uh, terms, uh, which is usually not good for, and therefore it's strongly recommended that you have the long-term plan and commitment and that all parties are committed to the one goal or for example five-year goal or ten-year goal and then you have the short-term flexible plan when you can adjust a little bit in accordance to the needs and in, in like in every uh, uh, industry you also need the monitoring which is clear monitoring and then you can see if the goals and vision is achieving or whether it needs to be amended. The next thing what is very important for, for the regional league is the infrastructure which is uh, very important for the especially for the ice hockey and it's a big challenge how to build a new infrastructure because usually the infrastructure which we will discuss later and you will also discuss this tomorrow it's, um, uh, it requires quite a strong financial uh, input, which is usually not needed because the sport is not profitable by itself. So it's quite a challenge how to join all the interests together from the sport society, from the states and from the financing providers to, to achieve uh, such infrastructure. And I would also like to put Kevin here a little bit to explain a little bit what is uh, in terms of the public procurement. To make a long story short, uh, in relation to different sports infrastructure, one regime was most commonly uh, seen as the most appropriate or the most uh, wishful in such cases. And this is, and we will see also on some examples in Slovenia, uh, such projects were established during a period of uh, 10, 15 years as of 2007 when the when this infrastructure system was introduced into our legal system, and that is a public-private partnership. Uh, this, is, this has been a major success uh, throughout Europe, uh, starting from America, uh, but in Slovenia, for example, there are still several problems that are associated with public-private partnership, and this is mainly that Slovenian local municipalities they do not see or they are not so brave to endorse this possibility that they have from uh, such partnerships. And also in relation to, uh, there is one specific problem and this is uh, that public funding is all only related to uh, public institutions and public, uh, public uh, places of uh, interest. And this is one of the major problems. But the public-private partnership is a possibility, and this is something that will be uh, even more so uh, introduced uh, into Slovenian, uh, Slovenian uh, sport environment. And we have some very good examples. One of them is uh, Socha Fun Park, for example, in Slovenia, where uh, different municipalities uh, within uh, Socha River obtained different um, arrangements for promotion of sport and private partner obtained uh, the financing of the project and the pu public partner provided, let's say, either place for this um, uh, infrastructure or 
uh, right up to 99 years in this case. So this is one of the possibilities that will still have to be developed in Slovenia, and Igor will also say yes. something about the case study. And then you will remember we also uh, I, we, we are also hoping to have one successful case in the uh, to building ice hockey rink in Slovenia. <laughs> Uh, basically, a lot of municipalities are quite willing to put the land into our hands free of charge, depending on the legal structure we will use. And uh, uh, we will have to build the uh, ice hockey rink on this land and uh, operate it for the period of 30 years, 50 years, or 99 years. Uh, what is the challenge in this respect is that um, we have to make the ice hockey rink profitable and to also introduce the private uh, financing provider into this rink, which could be achieved uh, if the municipality would also finance uh, give subvention to use the, the ice on this rink. And if we have this story right, everything can be put together. But we some kind have a little bit more trouble of finding the bank or financing provider for that, which is the challenge and we we can also discuss a little bit in the in the the last panel to find some kind of solution uh, in this respect. The Where is the finance? <coughs> the most important thing. Okay, this is the finance. Yeah, the most important thing to be successful, and I think. Uh, which is needed in every and each sport is how to find the financing. Uh, the sport is usually uh, basically financed with the sponsor, with the private money, and I don't see uh, a lot of financial industry like a bank loans, etc. But this is also possible. So the challenge is uh, not only how to reduce the cost, but how to increase the financing to put it in the sport. And I'm not only referring to the financing which you put the money there, uh, like spending, but also to increase a little bit of, of uh, revenues or that the sponsor will have uh, some kind of benefit into uh, financing not only the mainstream sport, but also the sports with a, low, a little bit lower um, uh, public interest. And the challenge here, I mean, uh, it's a big, of course, but it could be also achieved by, by a little bit innovation. So, for example, that the sports club uh, will do more about uh, merchandising to put the te uh, television, like I spoke to Slovenia Federation, they're putting their own television to increase a little bit of the public interest, or that the small sport will join together and have a, a similar uh, strategy how to obtain the sponsor and the sponsor will put uh, into each port separately so uh, this is of course not a legal challenge but uh, it's in challenge um, in general but from the legal point of view what we can do is to increase the legal documentation the corporate governance so that basically the financing provider will be more comfortable to providing the funds into the sport as they would do without a clear, legal, and transparent uh, environment. The, the last thing here, what we have on the slide, beside the corporate governance, is uh, how to increase the athletes' welfare. E each uh, regional uh, sport uh, uh, competition, uh, is ba the main purpose is to, for, to, that the athletes will compete. So if the athletes doesn't find the motivation, the progress and some kind of the security, uh, they will not like this regional league and they will exit this regional league, which is then uh, usually also the case. What is also in the Atlas welfare, and I think it's very important and should be focused a lot on this, is uh, that we will uh, link also, also the Atlas with the education. Because what is also the case in Slovenia, like for example ice hockey, uh, that uh, we don't have a lot of uh, people in the management boards or the, the public authorities which used to play the ice hockey but we have more people from other sport federations sitting on the chair, uh, on the main boards and this could be quite important and this could be achieved on the long term basis that we will uh, basically uh, put a little bit of more education into the sport so all the athletes, the hockey players which will leave the federation uh, they, will, they will have the chance sometimes to be on some kind of board members or to be successful and they will easily put back financing into the uh, ice hockey sport. 
which is a long-term vision, but could be achieved in the period of five or ten years or something like this. And the, the next thing, last but not the least, is the corporate governance and transparent legal environment, which we as a law firm can help a lot. And, and Kevin will. Yeah, in this respect, only a few short words. Corporate governance is very important in any such project. And also within the sport infrastructure, uh, corporate governance should exist, should be decided prior to engaging in any further negotiations, and most importantly, should be kept simple. Uh, there are three main reasons uh, why should we keep that short, simple, and clear. The main reason is that having a transparent corporate governance enables other people to see the functioning of the system and enables a good decision making within the process. And good decision making is very important in such, uh, in such projects. Uh, therefore, the legal documentation in relation to corporate governance, which uh, envisages different agreements, uh, different rules, uh, should be made available and should be made transparent. In such case, uh, the main reason for transparency is that in different sports, uh, parents, in case of uh, juniors, are very, uh, very well familiar with any such approaches and they tend to review such documentation and if the documentation is not appropriate uh, for them, they may have some uh, problems with uh, enrolling uh, in such uh, approach. Especially in the period of GDPR, the data privacy is one of the biggest concerns and therefore in any sports, any associations, uh, questions like notices on privacy, data protection, uh, and in what manner are the personal data processed is of great importance and must be uh, addressed within such schemes and within such rules that are adopted uh, within the, within the uh, association. Um, one of the important things is also innovation-driven sports society. With innovation, we have a vast potential to obtain different new <coughs> ways of either financing and also recognition in such case. Uh, and if we want to obtain the recognition and be uh, well known for the innovation in this sector, we should also use different legal possibilities that we have. Patents are one of the uh, possibilities that should be used either on national level, in Slovenia, on Europe level, or even uh, in international, international sphere. Trademarks are something that should be built and should be protected and also constantly used in order to achieve recognition uh, within the sector. Uh, there are also other possibilities in relation to copyright. In what manner should we cooperate with uh, authors of uh, different contributions. This is also something that must be regulated on case-by-case -case basis. But to conclude, anything that is provided in such rules should be concise and simple. This is something that is quite different from uh, other legal areas which tend to be complicated, but in sports law it should be kept quite simple.